everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had another busy week of racing with 12 drivers seeing action. We had several drivers that had career best finishes, a couple of wins, and some heartbreaks. So let's get right to the results. Anthony Alfredo was at Texas Motor Speedway trying to race his way into the $1 million NASCAR All-Star race by winning one of the stages in the NASCAR All-Star Open. Let's check in with Anthony for a recap. I'm walking to the plane a little bit early tonight. I'm super bummed we didn't make it into the All-Star race. Raced well in the open. We had a great speedycatch.com Ford Mustang, but it was all about track position. We were in the fifth or sixth spot the whole first stage and knew we probably wouldn't be much better than that. And you have to win a stage or win the race to make it in. So the only thing we could do was uh, try to pit, make it better. And we did, we just couldn't get the track position back with that package. Um, really hard to pass, really hard to make anything happen, all about momentum, but we had fun. I hate it because we had such a big group from Speedy Cash here, but hopefully they enjoyed it and uh, they enjoy the rest of the race, but thankful for their support. Looking forward to the next one, my Front Row Motorsports guys. Up next for Anthony, the Ally 400 at Nashville Super Speedway on June 20th. Here's some great news. Practice and qualifying is back for this race. Sheldon Creed had a rough day at Texas Motor Speedway where he started 16th, was working his way into the top 10 in stage one, but spun on lap eight, bringing out the caution. The GMS team got the number two lift kits for Less.com Silverado, repaired and back on the track, only to spin again on lap 22, making hard contact with the wall ending his day with a 35th place finish. Sheldon is currently six in championship points and locked into the playoffs by virtue of his win at Darlington. Up next for Sheldon, Nashville Super Speedway on June 18th. Joey East and the DGR team were at Southern National Motorsports Park for round five of the Ark Menard Series East in the Southern National 200. Joey was fastest in practice, then qualified fifth and turned in his best career finish in second in his number 54 Ag Solution Ford. That's four top fives and one top 10 and six starts for the ARCA rookie, now sets third in points, only four out of second. Up next for Joey, back to ARCA Menard Series West at Irwindale Speedway on July 3rd with Nate Clower Motorsports. Jesse Love was at Berlin Raceway for the Money in the Bank 125 in his number 21 Wimmer Motorsports Super Late Model. Jesse rolled off in the 16th position and raced his way to a sixth place finish. Jesse said after the race, this is by far the hardest track that I've ever raced at. Up next for Jesse, back in the Super Late Model at the famed Milwaukee Mile on June 19th. Grant Thompson was at Marshfield Motor Speedway for round two of the Tundra Super Late Model Series, where he qualified 16th, then won his heat race. Grant started 16th for the feature, but where did he finish? Let's check in with Grant for the results. What's going on, guys? Grant here. We are back at the hotel. Had a pretty good day at the at Marshfield Motor Speedway. Uh, you know, going into going into race day, you know, I felt pretty confident about it. I had a really good car at uh, at uh, WIR at last race, finished second to Casey. But uh, you know, first laps on that track in the first practice session on race day, that was that was gonna be crazy. But uh, went out felt confident. You know, ran the first practice session, got the feel for the car, had a really good car. But uh, at the end of practice, we were I think around sixth, seventh, or eighth. You know, not not too bad. We could have we we can do better. But I wanted to qualify I'm pretty good about it and drove it off in there too deep and got on the cross member a little bit hard and uh, ended up qualifying, I believe, 15th. So we're starting on the pole for the heat race. Won the heat race, so I felt pretty good about that. Uh, started 15th in the feature and uh, slowly made our way to the front. Wind up 8th tonight, so uh, I can't thank Alverson Motorsports enough, Casey Johnson Racing, Reed Enterprises, KRC Power Steering, and PFC Brakes. Just everybody that helps out. And uh, we will see you guys at Jefferson Speedway in the next race for the uh, Tundra Super Late Mall Series. Up next for Grant, Cars Tour debut at Dominion Raceway on June 19th with Justin Johnson Racing. Cassidy Hines ran twin features at All-American Speedway 
in her Friends of Jackman Foundation, Nate Clower Motorsports prepared Ford. Cassidy qualified seventh for the first win and brought home the victory for her first pro late model win. In the second feature, she ran in the top five for the first 30 laps before getting into an incident with another car with five to go, resulting in a 12th place finish. Let's get a race recap from Cassidy. Hey everyone, I raced by Nate Clara Motorsports Pro Late Model at All American Speedway this weekend, and we ran a set of twin mains. In the first main, I ended up winning it, which was really exciting because that was my first win in the Pro Late Model with Nate Clara Motorsports. And I was the first girl to win a Pro Late Model race at that track, so that was pretty awesome. In the second main, I was running in fourth for about 30 laps when with five to go, I ran into an incident with another driver. Unfortunately, we didn't get the result we wanted with a 12th place finish, but we did get the win in the first main, so I say our weekend was pretty accomplished. I couldn't have done it without all of my sponsors, Frontier Restoration, Commit to Fitness, Fort Worth Screen Printing, Driven Race Gear, LL Acousticals, the Nate Clara Motorsports team, Race Face Brand Development, and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. Up next for Cassidy, Pro Trucks at Colorado National Speedway on June 19th. Jake Bowman was at Hermiston Raceway for his first Pro Late Model race with Travis Sharp's Racing Dynamics. Jake qualified third, won his heat race, then finished third in the 70 lap feature. Up next for Jake, INX Legend Cars Summer Shootout at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Caden Honeycutt was back in his number 10 dirt late model at Boyd Raceway where he started 10th and raced his way to a third place finish. Up next for Caden, Cars Tour at Dominion Raceway on Saturday. Caden has dominated the last two Cars Tour race with a third place finish at Caraway, leading the race with two laps to go and a win at Langley Speedway, leading every lap. Can he park it in victory lane again this week? Tune in to CarsTour.tv Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time to find out. Brody Moore was at Colorado National Speedway for his second start in a super late model, and the young Colorado driver made the most of it, finishing on the podium in third. Up next for Brody, 5150 junior late models at Madera Speedway on June 26. Hudson Bolger was at Atlanta Motor Speedway for rounds two and three in the Thursday Thunder Series. On Wednesday, the Perry, Georgia driver qualified 14th and brought home a 12th place finish. Then on Thursday, he qualified 12th and finished 10th. Up next for Hudson, back to Atlanta for rounds four and five of the Thursday Thunder Series. Carter Whalen made a last minute change and raced at North Georgia's QMA in his heavy Honda where he was the fast qualifier, then turned in a dominating performance, parking it in victory lane. He also got some seat time in his heavy Honda World Formula car prepared by Landon Cox Racing. Up next for Carter, Metro Atlanta QMA on June 19th. Landon Cox was also at North Georgia QMA where he broke yet another track record in the Blue Rookie Division. But this time the racing gods smiled down on the young six-year-old Georgia driver as he started on the pole, led every lap, and captured the checkered flag in the A-Main. Up next for Landon, USAC Quarter Midget Nationals at Toledo, Ohio on June 24th through the 26th. Other drivers seeing action this week include Joe Valento, who will be at Dominion Raceway for round seven of the Cars Tour on June 19th. Bryce Bizanson returns to the Northwest Super Late Models at Hermiston Raceway on June 19th. Gavin Graham will be at Atlanta Motor Speedway for the INEX Thursday Thunder on June 16th and 17th. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. 
We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face driver. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.